Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 2nd, 2019 edition of the Science and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Usually when Xavier talks about malicious documents, he talks about analyzing these documents. Well, he's taking a different spin in his last diary. In this case, he came across a little Python script that will actually create malicious documents. All he had to do is search paste bin, so no dark web involved in this particular exploit. So the lessons learned here, first of all, probably not all that surprising. It's pretty easy to find these exploit generators for different office vulnerabilities. Secondly, it can actually be quite useful to take a look at one of these generators in a controlled environment in order to figure out how these exploits work and also test your detection techniques. And looks like domain fronting will be more difficult after Google and also Amazon did disable domain fronting for their cloud infrastructures. So let me talk a little bit about domain fronting because it has come up a few times over the last few months. It's really a technique to obfuscate traffic. To understand domain fronting, let me first talk a little bit about HTTPS. If you're setting up an HTTPS connection to a web server, the connection itself is encrypted, but it's still possible for an observer to see what site you connect to. First of all, you have to do a DNS lookup. The DNS lookup is in the clear and can easily be intercepted. Secondly, as part of the client hello message that you sent at the beginning of the HTTPS handshake, you are trying transmitting the host name in the clear, that's a feature called server name indication. Now, once you do have a TLS connection established, then you send the actual HTTP request and that is of course encrypted. As part of the HTTP request, you are also sending a host header. So with HTTPS, it's still possible to do some filtering and that of course has been abused by governments and also of course used on the defensive side by network administrators who for example, look for malware. What domain fronting does is it establishes a TLS connection to a host within a cloud service provider. It only uses that particular cloud service provider's domain name as part of the DNS lookup and as part of the server name indication option. But within the TLS channel, it will then send an HTTP request to another host and the endpoint in this case, which is a virtual server that the user may have set up with that cloud provider will forward the request. So essentially it is a proxy that's reachable over TLS. So the feature has been used for good and evil. There has been some malware that took advantage of the feature in order to appear to be an innocent connection to Amazon or Google's cloud. On the other hand, it also has fired back somewhat at some of the cloud providers because networks and countries that are trying to block specific domains now block the entire cloud provider because any connection to one of these cloud providers could potentially then be forwarded to one of these malicious or unwanted sites. The restrictions are enforced by limiting traffic to domains that are owned by Amazon and Google directly. So you could still do domain fronting. You can just not use one of Amazon's or Google's domains. And talking about TLS and encryption, Google Chrome will now start enforcing certificate transparency. What this means is that certificate authorities will have to publish any certificates they issue as part of public certificate transparency logs. Now, in some ways, that's a great idea because now you can get alerts whenever someone issues a certificate for a domain that you control. But it's also a little bit problematic because all certificates that you request, even certificates for internal hosts, are now known to the public. 
So a workaround for this issue was that for internal hosts, you would just use an internal certificate authority and that works quite well. But of course, for these internal certificate authorities, you do not have any public certificate transparency logs and Google Chrome may now flag these certificates as untrusted. There is of course also the issue if this will really just confuse users more than it will actually do good. Now, if you don't like it, you can disable the feature in Chrome globally, or you can also disable it for specific URLs. So this feature was enabled on May 1st and it will be enforced for all certificates issued after April 30th. Well, that's it for today and thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.